go to Tipperary now and say good morning, Josephine O'Neill. Good morning, Josephine. Good morning, Ryan. It's really good to talk to you because, you know, so many of us have, you know, f- very few surprises to find around our five kilometre hamster wheel these days. But you had a busy evening. So, Ryan, what we did last night, a group of us mm-hmm. dressed in costumes from 1918, took over the town in bubbles, of course, and erected plaques to the women of the town. In care. So in care. Congratulations. What a great idea. What, the, what were the uniforms? Were they come on them on? Oh, or? I, wore, I wore a most wonderful attire. I was like, um, I, I was channeling Hannah Sheehy Skeffington <laughs> and we had come on them on women and great. yeah, it I was it. incredible. So this was like, like a stealth nerds on tour, uh, dead of night, uh, correcting the historical record in a manner of speaking. Rewriting the history of the town plaque by plaque. Tell me everything. Okay, so this all happened a few years ago. I was at a history lecture in Care, and I thought, I'm never going to be at a lecture about the history of Care women. Mm. So the next day, I met my friend Mary O'Donnell, and I said, let's go look for them. So we said, okay, we we got two, uh, two others, Carl and Breda, together, and we said, okay, we need to go through newspapers and archives, and then just put it all in an archive. And then after a while, we realised there's a book in this. Right. So we brought out this book and then we won Tipperary Book of the Year. <laughs> Congratulations. We had a an amazing celebration the night that some women in Ireland got the vote in 2018. Yeah. And then um, we're still, I still have my hall full of more books because people are still looking for the books. And then when that all came down, Mary and I heard about women in England, in Norwich, who were putting up plaques to women secretly at night. Right. So we headed out to Norwich and we met them. <laughs> and they thought we were great because we'd written a book and we thought they were great because they had plaques. Mm-hmm. So then COVID came and we thought this is the ideal situation. The town is empty at night. Mm. And we all have the time to go through the women and see who deserves a plaque. So that's what we did last night. I love so, it. The, so the town would wake up to the women of the town being honoured. How many plaques did you put up around the place? We have about 24 plaques around the town with yeah. teams of installations because, of course, our local Gardaí, Jenny and Ray and Jenny, oversaw all of this. So it's all COVID compliant. And yes. then we did a walking tour. So in care, if you want to walk in the footsteps of care women, it'll take you about an hour and a half. You go from plaque to plaque. You can download it on your phone, stand in front of the plaque and hear the history of that woman. Oh, you've got, you're that sort of um, advanced in terms of technology. Yes. That's a great idea. It's fabulous. And so, do you know what's really amazing? As somebody said to me the other day, that their son in England really missed home. He just wished he could get back to care. And I thought, he will get back to care virtually. (laughs) Because <laughs> you, 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 you can do the tour online. Online, yes. And, and you can see the plaque, you can see the building, oh. and you can hear the audio. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that this afternoon in between power housing. I'm definitely going to go on my tour of care. Yes. I'd love and we that. we have amazing women. And we, oh, we're really lucky because Alice Maher comes from Care the Artist. So she mm. gave us her image. Our plaques are beautiful. She designed the plaque. And uh, there are some of the women I'd like to ask you about because I was fascinated to, to get to read a brief pressy of, of who they are. So, for example, uh, the care female orphans <gasps> sent from the yeah. workhouse. Tell me about them. They, now, they were orphaned by the famine and then um, they were sent to Australia. They'd lost their parents. Or if you just lost one parent, you were still defined as an orphan. Mm. And they were like a whole load of orphans left and went to Australia. Now, we followed their lives in Australia and some of them, you know, some of them were great spirited women who objected to the wages or whatever and some of them married, I'm I'm sure, and had happier lives than they would have had in post-famine Ireland. Uh, But nevertheless, you touch on the the famine experience and we never think about that with the the orphans. Yeah, of course. Yes, the horror of the famine and we, we put up a plaque to the famine women because we're lucky we have a, a local famine historian, Ed O'Riordan. So we had we had that. So we had, I mean, the incredible sadness of some of the history yeah. of women. Like, for instance, I mean, it was very moving last night. 
we put up a plaque to the banished women because they stood on the square before they were taken to mother and baby homes. Tell me, what they what? We know, I mean, when I was doing the research for for the book, uh, somebody said to me, I'll tell you where you stood if you were waiting to be waiting to be collected. Oh so God, that that's, was, that's a desperately grim image, isn't it? Sorry, and then, uh, yeah, and then we went to, there's an amazing, um, during the War of Independence, um, our local chief inspector of the RIC was taken and kidnapped and he was killed by the IRA and his wife. I mean, we have his letters that he wrote to his wife when he was kidnapped before he died. And so we put a plaque up to her because we thought, there's the other side. Is she, is that, is that Lily Potter? Is that Lily Potter, yeah. yes. And she, did but she have to act as a hostage? She, she went, yeah, under cover of darkness to get his body back. Gosh, ama- what about the mothers of the world wars? Another amazing, and you focus oh, in on Elizabeth I, Mason. I lo- yeah, she's related to me, and I would, oh. I grew up listening to the story of when she got word that James was missing, and how she waited and went to the post office every day hoping that there'd be news. So we put a plaque on the post office to the mothers who received the regret to inform you telegrams. Which she got two years after going in every day. Yeah, yeah. Who was Ellen Heffernan, Josephine? Ellen Heffernan is our keener. What, what keener, as in somebody who's mourning or... Yeah, more... Um, I remember my father telling us when we when, when we were young, when the last keeners attended the funeral, they were like professional mourners. Oh, I see, OK. And we have a great chapter on professional mourning in our book. So um, you would hire them. I mean, I suppose before um, counselling services and that, it, it, it allowed people to express their grief. That is fascinating. And so you hired a group of women and they cried. And it, I suppose it, it just allowed you to, to wail for, for tragedy. For sure. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a, 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 a character, for want of a better word, who features on the list as well, who sounds like something straight out of Game of Thrones called... Bad Badamir? Oh, Badamir! Oh my God! <laughs> Who's Badamir? Badamir! Oh my God! She's a um. Mary O'Donnell had heard years ago that um we were mentioned care women in the Great Book of Lickham. So Mary headed off to Dublin, and she found her. She was the mistress of a chieftain where yeah. Care Castle is now, and there was a feud, and she was. Murdered. So then he, the chieftain, went off and killed the murderer with a spear. So we put a plaque up to her because we said, we were in the news then. <laughs> she inspired such passion. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and then I'd like to mention Ellen Conway. Um, oh, isn't Ellen Conway. I mean, isn't it incredible? Ellen Conway went against convention. She kept her two sons. She was in the workhouse. She worked with farmers. And one son became a millionaire. Uh, wow. He, and then the other son was Kit Conway. And he was um, a Republican fighting in the Spanish Civil War. And, you know, it's incredible because you think of Ellen Conway. There's a monument. He's mentioned in Spain. Yes. On a monument. And there's also a monument to him in Ireland. So little did she know. Remarkable. Because you're talking about a woman who was bringing up her sons on her own in the 1880s or, or thereabouts. And for her to, God, she must, I mean, it's, it's just uh, out of her time, beyond her time. Yes. And did her you, time, did you meet Sister Joseph? I am. I have not met Sister Joseph on my travels here, uh, but I see her here. Rebel nun. Yes. Tell we me. were doing... Obviously, we do the history of the nuns and their contribution to care. And then we headed off down to Waterford. And we got all these letters from this great rebel nun, Sister Joseph, who was writing in the 1890s to the bishop and saying the Reverend Mother was a tyrant. (laughs) And the Reverend Mother was saying the veil would be taken from her. And she said, and we put it on her plaque, her phrase was, no one is bound to obey when the superior is commanding what we never vowed. Right. So we put that on the convent last night. Oh, I'd say they loved loved that, yeah. I love the fact when she died, um, her obituary said, her steps going gently around care, her calm face. Her calm and sweet face. And I thought, little did they know. Yeah, well, and um, and what uh, what about the Brosnan women? (gasps) Yes. Now, 
this, yeah, I kept, I did the research for the Land League women, yes. the Ladies Land League and Care, and I kept coming across newspaper reports about the women who went up the mountain to take firewood, obviously for their fires, but it was Lady the Landlord's Mountain. So you were, they were fined or threatened with prison for it. So there are three woodland areas around care. So every time I go for a walk up there, I think, my God, wow. the, the, think of these women. Because, yeah. I mean, the survival of their families probably depended on them. Isn't it amazing, though? The, 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 you know, they say that if the, if the walls could speak, if the trees could speak, you know. These, yes, and what I loved was you kept seeing the same women up in court. So I thought, yes, they kept going up. It, but also fascinating, the Ladies' Land League, um, where they took on the judge. What did you say? The, the, the judge offered to withdraw oh, the, the judge charges. Said, yeah. Oh, yeah, I loved that. When I found that, I remember it was late one night when I found that in the newspaper. And, and the judge offered to make an exception of the four local ladies, you know, to put the men, send the men to prison. And they said, no, do your worst, send us to jail. See, like, the history books are very uh, cruel to women in, this, in the sense that the Ladies' Land League, you know, that they, the words of care, Ladies' Land League, that, that the Brosno women, the, the people you're mentioning, they, they had the roles that they played, but <laughs> it is very masculine history, isn't it, in terms of who did the writing of it? Yes, and sometimes men got it because... The, the president of the Land League in Care began a speech at one stage and he said, this is the first time from a political platform I am going to say ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Because he said the ladies in care are an essential part of the movement. Yes. So obviously we were, I mean, you could see we were turning up in court, we were writing letters of protest. And I mean, we obviously, I loved, in fact, we found in 1906, we wrote to the French government complaining <laughs> but isn't it funny if, if if after the war of independence after we found our own independence there was possibly a sense for women you tell me now I'm, I'm just surmising from looking at it that this could have been a chance for us to be have been very progressive in our attitudes but that might have been shut down when kind of Dev John Charles McQuaid kind of got into bed in that in that uh, with the constitution and what have you and that an opportunity was completely missed Yes, we were, I, in 1840, Ryan, we were in care collecting money to repeal the Act of Union. And you can see we're becoming stronger and stronger. And then our local come on the man. I mean, we were carrying jellic night. One woman played God Save Ireland while the Black and Tans were ransacking her house. Christ. She played it on the piano. Did she really? Yes. And then... The twenties, they pushed us back into the kitchen. Yeah, that's the, that's what I, that's what I was wondering. I, it was, but what a terrible opportunity to miss! Oh, completely. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's almost like they sensed what was what was happening, and we finished our research in nineteen about forty three. So I mean, yeah. I, it's much more where it came from. I love your idea. Like this should be a template. Now, I know you you went you borrowed a bit of it from Norwich, but you're you're uh, pioneers for the Irish experience in this regard. This should be, you know, um, in every town in Ireland. Yes, it's, and that's what we hope. Before COVID, we had begun to go around and speak in other towns and say, "Please unearth the history of the women of your town. Yeah, yeah. Pull them out from behind the men. Find them in the alleyways." tell their story and and then COVID came but that's what we hoped from our book we we were saying we'll send books to you know to whoever wants books so that other towns will take this up and do their women and what's your can I ask your background Josephine what did you do for a living what do you do to, for a living I was I'm a retired teacher you must have, I bet you were a great teacher were you <laughs> Oh, no. no, but did you teach history as passionately I as you're talking history to me? I in English, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I love history. And did you love imparting the story of history? I loved, I loved, I just love teaching history, yes. Not surprised. Oh, look, there's a, a text from Jennifer said, I had the great pleasure of being taught history in Skull Creus Three by Josephine. It's great to hear her and the enthusiasm and passion for her history, which she shared so readily with her students. Always think of her fondly. So there you are. Oh, 
Oh, brilliant. Thank Proof you. in the pudding. And people saying, saying Neve said this is a wonderful thing to do. It's so interesting. I can't wait to get home to see the plaques. And uh, all three children back to school today, says Sue in Cork and preschool, just bliss listening to glorious adult conversation about care. <laughs> Thank you. And can you ask that lady from care, does she know anything about Lena Rice, the tennis player? Yes. Oh, Lena Rice is from New Inn. But we have her in our book because we are really proud to say that she played tennis in care. I mean, she came to care to practice, so we kind of claimed her a little bit. So where should people go, Josephine, uh, today if they want to do, it would be a great thing to do with your kids as well, if, to, if they're interested in history. How do we, how do we watch or... Uh, so yeah. we're on Twitter, Daughters of Doniski, that's our name. Daughters of Doniski. Yes, okay. and if you, if you Google that, you'll find, you'll find our map. We'll put a link up on our Facebook page just to guide people through there, which is great. And people would see it, yeah. And our, our, our big passion is to encourage other towns in Ireland to start looking for the history of the women. Because it's important for our daughters and our granddaughters. I mean, I don't have any granddaughters yet, but when I do, I want to be able to say, here's a book, these are the women you came from. Great. Great women. Oh, I've really enjoyed talking to you, Josephine. Real pleasure, absolute pleasure. Look forward to maybe having a cup of tea with you in care the next time I'm driving oh, through. Please if come you'd let to me, care. yeah, I'd love that. Do you know care? Care I, is a beautiful. I sure town. do. We've been there a few times on our tour around the country, but I'd love to meet you and maybe have a little ramble around the town. Oh, that, we would be thrilled yeah, if you did. That'd be my honour. Okay, let's do it. Congratulations to you and and the whole crew put that together. I just absolutely love it, and uh, I'll see you in care soon. Great, thank okay. you, Ryan. It's done. Nice to talk to you, Josephine O'Neill, Great. joining us on the phone live from Care this morning, and uh, that's passion, isn't it? Love that. 